in today's video. We're talking BCAAs. What is up YouTube? Welcome to the video. My name is Tyler, also known as the Fit Chemist, and I help people take control of their lives by taking control of our fitness and nutrition habits so that ultimately we can lead healthier and happier lives. So if you're new here, welcome. Please consider subscribing. Turn those notification bells on so you don't miss when I post new videos. And if you are returning, welcome back. I am so glad that you are here. In today's video, we're going to be talking about BCAAs or branch chain amino acids because a recent meta-analysis was just published by Brad Schoenfeld and Alan Aragon, which are two leading researchers in this field, and I feel like over time I've gotten a handful of questions from people about what are BCAAs, should I take them, are they worth my money, so we're going to talk about all of that today. What are branch chain amino acids? We're going to start this video with a little biochemistry lesson. So there are 20 amino acids in total, nine of which are considered essential amino acids, so we need to get those from our diet because we don't have a good way of producing them. These are also called EAAs, so if you look up in the scientific literature and you see EAA, that's what that is referring to. And then branch chain amino acids are amino acids that have a branching point in their chain, hence the name BCAA. There are three BCAAs and they are leucine, isoleucine, and valine. Of the three branch chain amino acids, leucine is arguably the most important because this branch chain amino acid serves as the trigger for muscle protein synthesis. So if you look up the leucine threshold, you can learn a little bit more about that. But essentially what these supplement companies do is they just take the isolated variants of these branch chain amino acids, put them in a tub with some flavoring ingredients, package it up, and then sell it to the consumer. Keep in mind, you can get all these branch chain amino acids from your diet if you are consuming enough protein. So I'll put up a little screenshot from a Healthline blog that shows the varying amounts of branch chain amino acids in various food sources. So by no means is it necessary to take a BCAA supplement. We're now gonna transition into what do BCAAs do for you, or at the very least, what do these supplement companies claim they do for you? I went on Google as well as Amazon and looked at various products and I think a common theme among the marketing teams here is that they're going to enhance muscle recovery as well as increase muscular endurance. The thought process behind this is that if you recover faster, you're gonna be better suited for your next workout and if you increase your muscular endurance, you're gonna be able to lift longer and lift more weights over the long term both of which would hopefully contribute to you getting bigger and stronger. The Healthline blog that I mentioned earlier even mentioned that it's possible that BCAAs increase muscle mass, and I saw some articles that said it's possible that BCAAs could increase your strength, but what I figured we'd do in this video is see is there any validity to these claims and are BCAAs worth taking? So stick around to the end of the video and find out, but with that, Let's get into it. What does the science say when it comes to BCAAs? As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, we're gonna be looking at a meta-analysis that is hot off the press, published by Schoenfeld and Aragon and colleagues. This was so hot off the press that I actually had to dish out some cash for you guys. The things I do for YouTube, man, y'all better appreciate this. Nonetheless, the study will be linked in the description box below, but unfortunately, you're probably gonna have to pay for it too. It's not something that I have access to through my university, so unfortunately, can't share it with you. Anyways, let's get into what the study actually says. So the first section of this meta-analysis, they were concerned with what the literature says about muscle protein synthesis, and they wanted to compare how branch chain amino acids plus an inadequate amount of protein in your diet compares to a diet that has an adequate amount of protein. In this particular section, they highlight five or six studies that actually found that BCAAs plus an inadequate amount of protein does rescue the muscle protein synthesis response or the MPS response compared to a traditional diet that is higher in protein. So this seems to suggest that BCAAs can actually trigger MPS primarily through leucine. If you'll remember, I said there's like a leucine threshold and a leucine trigger. However, they do highlight one study that says that if you only take leucine and you don't have extra protein with it, that's not gonna stimulate muscle protein synthesis. So to them, this sort of suggested that you do need to take leucine, but you also need extra protein present because those are gonna be the building blocks for the muscle that you are building. In this section, they state, what emerges when assessing the available evidence is that a hierarchy exists to the requisite amino acid building blocks that would ensure the most robust anabolic response. Whole intact proteins are greater than EAAs or essential amino acids, which are greater than BCAAs or branch chain amino acids, which are greater than leucine alone, which represents the hierarchy of anabolic stimulation, 
provided that sufficient leucine is present in each condition. So what's the takeaway from this section? Well, you might get away with some muscle protein synthesis activation from supplementing with BCAAs, but at the end of the day, if you have a high enough protein intake from your diet, that's what's gonna be best for you. We'll get back into the science of BCAAs in just one second, but my question of the day for you guys is, what are your thoughts on BCAAs? Have you taken them before? Do you take them currently? And have you noticed any effect either with or without them? Let me know in the comments down below and with that let's get back into it. The second section of this meta-analysis was more concerned with BCAAs and how they influence muscle hypertrophy. So they did highlight seven studies ranging from 2012 to 2020, and they looked at various populations, so very young individuals and very old individuals. They compared across the board what the dietary intakes looked like, how they self-reported these dietary intakes, what the resistance training programs looked like, so how many days per week, what kind of split were they doing, how long was the training program, and then they wanted to see what the effect of BCAA supplementation was in comparison to non-supplementation after those resistance training programs. One noteworthy quote from this section was, in this regard, findings largely show that young and middle-aged individuals consuming adequate protein receive no additional benefit from BCAA supplementation. There was one study in particular in this section that stood out to me that wanted to compare the difference of no supplementation versus three grams of leucine supplementation versus 25 grams of whey protein supplementation. This study stood out to me because their results suggested that there was no difference on muscle hypertrophy across all three groups. At first, this result does seem shocking, right? If there's a group that's not consuming any extra leucine or whey protein, how do they have the same exact muscle hypertrophy response as a group that is consuming protein? The next sentence in this paragraph gets rid of that mystery because they state that all the participants in this study were consuming an adequate amount of protein, and by that they mean 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, which I think comes out to be roughly 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight. And since they were consuming enough protein, the extra supplementation had absolutely zero difference across those groups. It's also worth mentioning that the authors of this meta-analysis say that the research is not necessarily that conclusive yet on how branched chain amino acids can actually influence hypertrophy while in a calorie deficit, but they do cite one study that actually suggests that you can preserve lean body mass from a higher protein intake and not necessarily with branch chain amino acid supplementation. So they suggest that if you are going to be in a calorie deficit, just bump up your protein intake a little bit and you should be good to go. The third section of this meta-analysis then wanted to look at branch chain amino acids and how that reflects on strength performance. And what they found after looking at two additional meta-analysis published earlier than this paper, as well as five articles, they saw basically what they saw in the hypertrophy section. If you're consuming an adequate amount of protein, there is no extra advantage to consuming BCAAs. In their conclusion, they state, provided that total protein intake requirements are met, there are no apparent benefits from consuming additional branch chain amino acids as building muscle requires a full complement of essential amino acids. Therefore, individuals seeking to optimize strength-related performance and body composition should focus on ensuring that they consume adequate daily protein greater than or equal to 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day, replete in all nine essential amino acids. And later on in their conclusion, they state, perhaps more importantly, there's a clear and seemingly unnecessary monetary cost of the supplement. Bottom line, BCAAs are a waste of your money. They might taste great, I'll admit that. I used to take Extend BCAAs and I've also had some from PE Science. The flavors they have are amazing, especially in the summer. Put that in your blender bottle with some cold water and some ice cubes, mm, they taste delicious, but unfortunately the science says that there's not really any additional benefits from consuming them. You are definitely way better off spending your money at the grocery store and buying whole food sources so long as you are able to get an adequate amount of protein each and every day. Remember, our bodies don't have a way of storing amino acids like we do for carbs and fats, so you have to hit that protein intake each and every day, and if you do so, there's no need to spend money on BCAAs. The only reason you might consider spending money on BCAAs is if you are vegan or vegetarian because it might be a little bit harder to actually hit some of these amino acid profiles. However, there was a study done by Hevia, Lorraine, and coworkers that compared an omnivore diet to a completely plant-based diet, and they found absolutely no difference on muscle hypertrophy in that study. So even then, I don't think it's necessarily worth spending the money on BCAAs. It's important to note that both groups in this study were equated for protein, and what they state in their conclusion is, 
a high protein about 1.6 grams per kilogram per day or about 0.7 grams per pound of body weight exclusively plant-based diet plant-based whole foods plus soy protein isolate supplementation is not different than a protein matched mixed diet mixed whole foods plus whey protein supplementation in supporting muscle strength and mass accrual suggesting that protein source does not affect resistance training induced adaptation in untrained young men consuming adequate amount of protein so what they found in that study is in agreement with what we see in this meta-analysis so please stop spending money on bcaas and just focus on eating enough protein every day and you'll be good to go when it comes to both strength and hypertrophy all right guys that's gonna be it for today's video i hope that you enjoyed it if you did please give it a thumbs up let me know in the comments down below and again if you're new here be sure to subscribe turn those notification bells on because i post new videos every single friday and you do not want to miss when i go live and with that I'll see you in the next video.